Hello folks, welcome to this week's edition of the Satori Traders Precious Metals News. Our focus stock this week is Calibre Mining. We are looking at the weekly time frame. I was doing some portfolio grooming this week and when I looked at the chart of Calibre, I noticed what could be a cup and handle formation. A couple of different ways of looking at this pattern regardless. We're basically looking at a doubling of this this range which gives us a target up here at 364 and then I noticed that coincidentally we have an open gap up at that level 340 350 somewhere in there and so that seems like a, a likely target or a good target for this stock in the next big price movement and so let's see energy elevated macd is in bull mode looks like we're on a buy signal let's yeah macd bull mode and on a buy signal looks like investors are flat right now but yeah so flat on accumulation distribution again in the weekly time frame we won't look at volume too closely anyway this stock is looking good on a technical basis oh and this is what what really got me thinking bullish thoughts about this stock i noticed that the last time we got a 10 week crossover buy signal where the the 10 week moving average crossed moved above the 40 week moving average we we got a tripling of price and so here we are again this we just recently got the here's our crossover again is is this is the 10 week moving average rising above the 40 week and so the potential based on you know past results is that, that we could see a tripling of the share price which would bring this prior high at six dollars into play and so i was excited about the stock based on this technical picture and then i went to look at their presentation and not so excited so i noticed some dated you know in their corporate presentation what they're showing is two years old yeah two years old and then there's some more stuff where they're two years they're 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 basing current presentation on on information that's two years old now some of the backstory if i remember correctly is that calibre picked up two producing mines from b2 gold and so they're small producers here it is so 32,000 35,000 ounces a year that's a definitely a small production volume but I believe Calibre got a good deal on these mines so it's a potential investment again so I like the technical picture I wasn't all that excited when I looked at their corporate presentation let's continue so this is gold in the weekly time frame i think i showed this chart last week and and mentioned that tim morge dr timothy morge one of his techniques for charting he called double the range and so that's what we're seeing here we had this price channel and now if we double the range of that price channel we get a, a new price channel and coincidentally here's gold bumping into the top of that channel and rolling over and of course i'm my bullish bias i'm expecting that that's only a temporary rollover and that we'll we will see a subsequent continuation of this uptrend notice that we're potentially moving towards a crossover a buy signal based on the 10 week and 40 week moving averages obviously that would be bullish potentially attracting in new investment money macd has moved up into bull mode where both both indicator lines are above the zero level in that bull mode the primary trend tends to be upward and so again another reason to not be very concerned about this last two weeks of price action stochastics or the energy level as i prefer to look at this indicator remains very elevated you know taking a little bit of breather but that's no big deal so gold looking good in the weekly time frame in the daily time frame you know obviously 1900 is a significant 
level and what we're seeing is gold basically bumping sideways testing and and trying to overcome this resistance at the 1900 level we're now below clearly below the median line of this andrews pitchfork I still expect that the next target is 1950, and once 1900 is overcome, we'll see 1950 quite quick, quickly. MACD is in bull mode, although currently on a sell signal. Stochastic still in the high range, obviously has dropped and is appears to be headed lower. So that's gold in the daily time frame. This is silver in the weekly time frame. And I just wanted to show here, this is a very impulsive movement. You know, look at this, basically that's a parabolic price movement. Of course, parabolic moves are never sustainable. They just aren't. And so parabolic move, no reason to expect that to be sustained. And of course it wasn't. But what this impulsive move and pullback does for us is it, it sets up or it allows us to apply the Fibonacci extension tool with a fairly high degree of accuracy. We really need an impulsive price movement before we can expect accuracy out of the FIB extension. And so anyway, a one-to-one -one move here gives us a price target at 34.57. I'm being conservative here. We could actually say that this impulsive price movement started down here at the, this was the big scary plunge where all markets move to significant lows. If we look at that, our one for one potential upside move is $40. 39.88. So that's silver in the weekly time frame. Another way to look at this, let's get the FIB tool out of the way, is that we have, and I'll reset the chart. This is a flagpole. Another way of looking at this price pattern is that this is a flagpole. This structure is the flag. And as a general thumb rule, we can think of the flag as marking the midpoint or the halfway point of a price movement. And so again, we, we've already seen it with the FIB extension. If we get a one for one move, one for one repeat of this flagpole, this impulsive price movement, we get that target up at almost forty dollars. So let's keep rolling here. Silver in the daily time frame. We're basically down in this sideways range, just kind of bumping along between, you know, it's twenty-seven forty on the low end and twenty-eight fifty on the high end. One once silver breaks above 30, we're likely to see an acceleration of the uptrend. If you believe in managed markets or manipulated markets, what you would find on the web right now is that the cap on silver is $28. Whoever is controlling the silver market has decided that $28 is the top, and then in gold that $1,900 is the clear top. From that perspective, if you and I were managing these markets, we obviously would be concerned about price getting back to the previous high around 2076, which isn't that much above, you know, what's that? $200, you know, so another $200 higher from here and we're back at the previous all-time high, which of course sets up the potential for new all-time highs. And, and we certainly wouldn't want to see that if we were charged with managing this market. In my opinion, silver is the, it's the canary in the coal mine, if you will. If you were charged with managing the precious metals market, you, me personally, I would pay particular attention to silver. I would not want silver to break out because I would expect that that would be a signal to a whole bunch of investment money that they needed to be involved in the precious metals. So I would pay particular attention to silver. So anyway, let's keep rolling. Mining stocks, weekly time frame, GDXJ. This is basically our indication of what are mining stocks doing in the big picture. And 
and so far they are continuing with the bullish uptrend. Mining stocks are in a bullish uptrend. Make note of the pending crossover buy signal from the moving averages. This is the 10-week and 40-week moving averages. And on that note, once that crossover occurs, you know, here, here was the previous crossover. We had, let's look, so that was May, that's May of 20. There was the peak, well actually here was the peak in price, May of August. So that's, you know, May, June, July, three months. And so if we were to see a repeat of that, we're looking at another three months of uptrending price in, in the mining stocks. And, and of course, my bullish bias again, that's exactly what I'm expecting. Another th three months of, of this trend continuing and, you know, price, you know, challenging the upside of or the upper side of this channel possibly. So, but again, I'm, I'm a super bull on, on the precious metal sector. We got some really nice action. The daily time frame in GDXJ, this is the 200 day moving average. For the last week or so, we've been having price kind of bump along sideways between the 20 day and 200 day moving averages. On Thursday, we got this really nice bullish candlestick price closing almost on its high, very, very close to closing on its high and nice volume on that day. Energy hasn't shown a clearer indication that it wants to rise at this point. MACD is in bull mode, suggesting that the primary trend is up. This is a nice chart. You know, the, the mining stocks just look good based on our GDXJ proxy. SIL, same story. Nice bump in here along an obvious support zone. Push up towards the median line of this modified Andrews pitchfork. Silver stocks just looking nice here. Let's see the dollar. Actually, we're this is the weekly time frame on the dollar, and you know this is actually looking kind of bullish action where we had this you know obvious support level support zone price has just tested that support zone and appears to be bouncing and moving higher now based on the moving averages you know the moving average is clearly in bearish mode the 10 week moving average is is obviously below the 40 week moving average both of them are pointing down energy is low down in the basement macd is in bear mode so again, kind of mixed signals from the U.S. dollar, but that does look like a at least a bounce off of an obvious support level. Here in the daily time frame, this uh, support and resistance zone, we've been looking at it for several months now. And obviously in the past week, we, we just got the dollar has rallied up into that that resistance level and hasn't been able to push up into it. So energy elevated and rising sharply, MACD rising on a buy signal. So, you know, again, bull or bear, you, you kind of, what what's your bias on, on the U.S. dollar? Obviously, the U.S. dollar's behavior is significant in several other markets, and obviously the precious metals that we care about. The U.S. dollar has an effect on interest rates in the weekly time frame. Obviously, we had a big pullback last week. Could be a start of a downtrend, but we have to keep in mind that we've just pulled back in, in the weekly time frame. This is just a 38% Fibonacci retracement of this big impulsive movement. You know, and again, a big price movement, a big, in this case, it's a big movement in interest rates or yield. It's not surprising that we would get a pullback. And a 38% Fibonacci retracement, that's actually, that's a mild pullback. You know, 61.8 uh, would be all the way back here. So we're not at that point yet. That is a big bearish candlestick. So in the four hour time frame, so I don't usually drop down into the below the daily time frame in this weekly report, but this is an exception. I wanted to look at this support resistance zone that we've been watching for the last few weeks, and clearly the, the yield, TNX, has 
dropped below that support resistance zone, and we can see that we got a test. We dropped below on a, actually an impulsive gap downward and then tested that level from below for resistance, spiked up into it, but then obviously fell off sharply. Now we're down at this 145 level. We can see where we have some support, potential support and resistance from these prior price interactions. Our next level lower, if if yield continues to drop is this 1.4%. 1 1 so, but this is what I really wanted to look at is, was, was this a decisive break of this support level? And it was. We might see a tradable bounce from this level. That could be what we have going on right now is a bounce. But based on that impulsive break of that support level, I would, I would stand aside in this market for a few sessions and, and see what it's going to do, what it wants to do. Equities last week obviously pushed, S&P anyway, pushed to a new all-time high. The equity markets, they're just super overbought. What can you say? But new all-time high in SPX. Dow has not overcome its previous all-time high, that spike up into the top of that channel, bumping along the 20-day moving average as support. NASDAQ reached or almost reached the prior high. You know, everything's bullish in this chart. Energy elevated, MACD in bull mode on a buy signal. You know, overbought, not quite as overbought as the other equity markets. So Brent continues its push higher. Looks like it has tested this, what's the top there? That's a 71, 30 or so. Has tested this level for support and found it. That's a bullish doji there. Prices closing above the median line of this Andrews pitchfork. If we were trading this market based on this Andrews pitchfork, our next price target would be about $77, somewhere up here along the upper median line of that fork is what we'd be looking for. MACD in bull mode on a buy signal, energy clearly super elevated. Bitcoin is at an interesting juncture. So one of the things we can we can use to judge whether a market is in an uptrend or a downtrend is volume. And so we can see this is a case of a downtrend volume behavior. When price is dropping, volume is rising. And so we're seeing this three times in a row. When Bitcoin has dropped lower, volume has risen. And now on this most recent rally, notice that volume has dropped. And so this volume behavior is indicative of or consistent with a downtrend, not an uptrend. And so anyway, I'm just kind of watching the, the crypto space based on Bitcoin as my proxy. Now there are 5,000 cryptocurrencies currently, and, and obviously it's quite challenging to monitor that many individual securities, whatever you want to call the cryptos. Bitcoin, my proxy, is at an interesting juncture. It's, it's dealing with resistance at the 20-day moving average and the upper median line of this Andrews pitchfork. Now, this fork is way too steep. This is too steep to be a con consistent or a sustainable downtrend, but you never know what the next movement's likely to be. And again, the volume behavior is consistent with the downtrend. Now, on a bullish note, energy is clearly rising and rising sharply. MACD is rising off a very oversold level and a new buy signal from MACD. So a mix of buy and sell signals based on Bitcoin. Also notice that we have this open gap and a fairly large open gap, almost, uh, what's that? Yeah, 1,400 points. And gaps tend to get filled. And so if we get a continuation of this downward action, it wouldn't be surprising to see that gap filled. So anyway, that's Bitcoin. Let's keep rolling. Look, we've got a few mining stocks. So when the mining stocks are behaving bullishly, 
we'd like to see the individual stocks also behaving bullishly. We want to see them behaving consistent with the overall market. And so here in Endeavor, EXK, that's exactly what we see is that on Thursday we get this super bullish candlestick price closing almost on its high there. And then on Friday, you know, pushing into this resistance level again. But this is the key is that we want to see the stocks behaving appropriately for the sector. Aveno, I suspect in, in Aveno, this, you know, investors don't know what to do with this big price movement here. And so they're a little bit leery of Aveno. I'm not concerned about it. This sideways action, I suspect, will will end in a upward movement at some point. Alexco, you know, no worries again here. So we got, this is the weekly time frame. So in, in last week's action, we got to push up into this resistance level and then a sharp pullback. So nice, nice action. Energy is elevated. MACD is in bull mode on buy signal. Anyway, Lexco looking good. Lion 1, still just bumping along this $1 level. I have a large holding in Lion 1. I, I'm certainly holding on to it. They've got a very nice land package and, and some good, good stuff going on. What I was pleased to see is that they are back at work. The COVID lockdown relaxed in the last week or so at, this is in, where are they at? They're in Fiji, I believe. Yeah, Fiji. And so they are back on site. They've got six drills. We ought to be seeing some results out of Lion 1 shortly. Here we go. Novo, I was very pleased to see this. We're in the weekly time frame again. Novo did uh, an equity raise and investors were not pleased. Obviously, the stock sold off. Big movement like that. It's not surprising that it, it takes some time for a stock to overcome that kind of technical damage. And, and obviously, that's, that's what we had. You know, there's four weeks of sideways bumping. What's nice is these last few weeks of bullish price movement higher and nice volume action as well. On accumulation distribution, looks like investors are starting to move back into Novo. MACD, not quite in, not quite into bull mode yet, but heading that direction, energy rising. Anyway, nice, nice action in Novo. Our next target is this, oh, that's actually the 200 week moving average. Our, our next price action, our next price target is up here around 250, 260. It's the median line of this modified shift pitchfork. I'd really like to see, let's get those moving averages out of there. Hello. I'd really like to see Novo do that fairly quickly, get up to this level and demonstrate that investors are going to come back into this stock. So anyway, I was pleased to see that action in Novo. This is Dolly Varden. Dolly's got a nice land package up in British Columbia. Again, we're looking at the weekly time frame. If you want to consider this as a downward price channel, and of course that's consistent with the whole precious metals sector. We, it was all in a big downward movement for about seven months. We could consider this a breakout where Dolly has broken above that downtrending channel. And now we've just gotten the, the test, the retest of that breakout level, the top of that channel. What we'd like to see on a bullish perspective is a, an upward movement from that test. And so I, I went and looked at Dolly's presentation just as a refresher to me. So they're, they're targeting what they'd like to find is 100 million ounces of silver. They're mining in the British Columbia Golden Triangle. Always a good strategy if you're looking for silver and gold. Go somewhere where people have found silver and gold in the past. And that's exactly what Dolly's doing. They've got a historic land package. 
high grade silver yeah very high grade silver 35 i got the calculator out i think that's about 35 ounces per ton which is obviously high grade way back in 1919 1921 so the share structure looks pretty good fully diluted 147 million shares where are they at market cap 87 million we got eric sprott involved 18 percent hecla that's nice to see at 11 percent management is in there they got about five percent and institutional is 13 percent so some you know nice nice share structure with dolly i'll let you go look for yourself let's see there's the so there's the golden triangle you can see that uh, we got some other players obviously in this golden triangle here's dollies this is a blow up they're down here in the little the bottom of the triangle this is a blow up of of their land package and let's keep rolling let's see ethos gold i was pleased to see this we're in the daily time frame so this is basically this is the last week week and a half nice bullish action 20 cents if you're into the penny stocks that's one you might consider again i went and looked at their corporate presentation what have we got 160 million shares out fully diluted 40 million market cap. We got uh, Crescat Capital. They're being advised by Quentin Henney, Doc, Dr. Henney. So if you see Crescat involvement, trust that the Dr. Quenny, Dr. Quenny, too funny, that Dr. Henney is involved and that's a good thing. That's one of the, the attributes that I like to see in a mining stock. So that's ethos, nice action in the, from a technical perspective, folks, I've gone way too long, so I'm going to wrap it. Have a fantastic week going forward, make lots of money. Look forward to speaking with you again next week.